Hi guys, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the books that I hope to read over the autumn season and you may notice that I've changed this up a little bit because I was doing monthly TBRs uh, but I'm just so rubbish at sticking to them because I am just very much a mood reader. So I've picked about 12 books that I want to read which averages out at four books a month and seeing as I read more than four books a month I've given myself just a little bit of room to go to my bookshelves and choose something if it is particularly calling to me at that time. So I have six kind of general books, um, four crime slash thriller books because I love to read that type of book at this time of year, one big book that I want to challenge myself to read and one I'm calling it a non-fiction book but as you'll see when I talk about it that's not strictly true plus on top of those 12 we'll have the three bookish mama picks which is the book club that I run with two other ladies you don't have to be a mama to join we just all happen to be mums who love to read so the name was born as always I will leave the link to that group down in the description box so I have those books as well although we've only picked the book for September so far but Enough chattering, let's get in and talk about some books. Okay, so firstly I'm going to talk about the book that I'm currently reading because I am aware that we are now heading into the third week of September and I'm only just finding time to sit down and film this. So that is To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. If you watched my recent haul video then you'll know that I broke a golden rule recently and watched the Netflix movie of this before I'd read the books but I loved it so so much that I knew that I really wanted to pick up the book so this is just a cozy heartwarming YA about a young girl called Lara Jean who has written a love letter to every boy that she's ever fallen in love with she seals them she addresses them she has hidden them in a hat box in her room and then by some crazy happenstance the letters get posted out and Lara Jean has to deal with the fallout that happens after that and as I said this is just a really cozy heartwarming super quick read and I'm really really enjoying it and um, it's a little bit different from the movie but yeah I have a feeling that I'm going to want to pick up the next book in this series once I finish this because it's just such a gorgeous little read and I'm really really enjoying it. Next up we have Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This is general fiction, it's set in the 1970s and it's about a Chinese American family and we discover that the daughter of this family, Lydia, has been found dead and this is a story about secrets, about longing, about the pressures that parents perhaps place on to their children and I have never read a Celeste Ng book but I've heard absolutely fantastic things about her writing and it's such a short book that I'm hoping to fly through it but yeah I'm just really really looking forward to reading this. A lot of the people that I share similar reading tastes with have read this and adored it so one that I am very much looking forward to picking up soon. Then we have A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass, and some of you may know that um, I actually thought that this was a full book and didn't realise that it was a novella when I ordered it so a little bit disappointed but I believe that this was just a novella released to bridge the gap between A Court of Wings and Ruin and the next full book that Sarah J Mass was releasing in this series so this is kind of is this the fourth book book that's been released in this series if you're not familiar this is a mature YA series and it started life as a retelling or with the foundations of a retelling of Beauty and the Beast but set in a world where there is fae or fairies and magic and it's kind of developed and gone on from there it's fantasy it's very uh, Marmite in taste. Some people really, really love it, and some people cannot stand it. I actually, to say that I've just described it as Marmite, I very much sit on the fence with it. I read Sarah J. Master's writing knowing what I'm going to get when I go into it, but devouring it nonetheless. Um, so, yeah, I'm interested to see where she's going to take this. I, I'm not sure actually if 
the next book is the last one in the series or whether I'm muddling that up with Sarah J Mass's other series which is Throne of Glass. But yeah, just one, again, it's super, super short so I'm hoping that's going to be a really easy read and it's just going to help bridge the gap between the last book that I read and when the next book comes out whenever that may be. Another book which I also mentioned in my recent book haul video which I will link in the description box down below is Judy Vardy by Ruth Estevez. This is a book which was sent to me for review and it's historical fantasy fiction set in 1779. It follows the story of 16 year old Judy who was rescued at birth and is being raised in a coastal community which centres around piracy and I think we pick up the story when Judy is starting to feel like everything Everything is falling to place in her life. She has a job, she has a blossoming romance and then figures from her past emerge and Judy has to decide where her loyalties lie. So I believe that this has maybe a little bit of love in it. It definitely sounds like a coming of age story all set against a backdrop of seas and piracy and I am very much looking forward to reading it. Next up we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a light-hearted science fiction book about a motley crew who are journeying through space and they are given the opportunity of a lifetime when they are asked to construct a hypertunnel that will give them access to a distant planet. The only thing is that they have to survive first in order to do that and I have heard very good things about this. I've heard that it's less about the science fiction and more about the characters and you guys should know by now that I am so here for a strong character driven novel so yeah just one that I am looking forward to picking up this season. Then we have Heart of Thorns by Mia Barton. This is a YA fantasy about 17 year old Mia who has decided to dedicate her life to hunting down Gwyrak who are women slash demons with dark magical abilities and it's these Gwyrak who killed Mia's mother and she basically wants revenge and then Mia one day is told by her father that she has to marry the prince I believe that something goes wrong either at the wedding or just after the wedding and Mia discovers that she herself has some dark magical abilities um, and the story kind of unfolds from there. Now this has the potential to be quite tropey I feel. Um, just from reading the description I am intrigued by it but I'm not sure if it's not just going to fall into all those classic YA tropes. So I'm crossing my fingers that it's going to have a few tricks and a few surprises up its sleeves but we shall see. Okay then moving on to the crime slash thriller books that I want to read in autumn. First up I picked The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith which we all know is a pseudonym for J.K. Rowling. So this is a, the first in a series of books about war veteran turned private detective Cormoran Strike and this series kicks off when Cormoran is asked to investigate the suspicious suicide of a young model and he is thrown into the world of the wealthy and the famous and begins to uncover some dark, dark truths. And to be honest, I'd forgotten I had this book on my TBR shelf, but I think the latest book in the series has just been released and people have been going wild for it. So it sparked my interest again and I thought I'd pick it up and give it a go and see how I get on. Then we have The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapina. This is about a couple with a six month old daughter who decide to leave their daughter in their home when they go next door to a neighbor's dinner party and they take the baby monitor with them and the husband reassures the wife that everything's gonna be fine, they're gonna be able to here and she returns home to check on her daughter and discovers that she has gone and I think that's pretty much all I need to know about the story as I said with as I've said countless times when I go into thrillers I like to go in as blind as possible and so yeah it says on the front people are capable of almost anything the most talked about thriller of the year in 2017 so one that I'm looking forward to. Next I have Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson and the back of this book is particularly vague so I'm just going to read it to you because I only know what it says on the back. So it says memories define us. So what if you lost yours every time you went to sleep? Your name, your identity, your past, even the people you love all forgotten overnight and the one person you trust may only be telling you half the story. Welcome to Christine's life. 
Um, so um, yeah, I think that just about covers that. Next up, another book that I've talked about countless times that I'm finally hoping to pick up, and that is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. And I've said this a number of times, so I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but this gives me full on breakfast club vibes in that it says on the front a geek a jock a criminal a princess add in an outsider add in a murder and the story kind of unfolds from there and i've heard mixed things from people about this so i'm interested to see what i think um yeah i don't know much more about it than that five students walk into detention only four leave alive we'll see then the big book that I want to add into reading this season is the next one in A Song of Ice and Fire or what is commonly now known as A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I read the first two parts. This is book three, part one of A Song of Ice and Fire called A Storm of Swords, Steel and Snow and it just picks off where the last epic high fantasy book left off can't talk to you in too much detail about this but suffice to say if you have been under a rock somewhere and you've got no idea what this series is about it's high fantasy it's set in a world that is quite similar to our own but with a more medieval tilt to it it's very very heavy on characters so if you love strong character development then these might be books worth picking up i just absolutely adore them. I want to say I fly through them but I don't but I get full on absorbed into the world and I just I've read them so many times I really really enjoy them and I'm really really enjoying the reread of them so this is just the next one on the list. And then the final physical book that I have is Sold by Patricia McCormick and this is the book that I referred to as non-fiction because it's a fiction book but it's actually based on real life accounts which the author took when she interviewed women. So this is realistic fiction. It follows the story of a 13 year old girl in Nepal who is sold into the sex slave trade industry by her family because they are very very poor and it's Based, it, as I said, it's based on real life accounts that the author took when she visited um, India and Nepal and um, yeah, I just think that it's a very relevant and very poignant uh, book to read and I'm very interested to discover more about it. And then, as I mentioned, the bookish mamas pick for September. Every month we pick a different genre. So September was classics. So we went with The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. And I haven't started reading yet and I don't know much about it other than it's about a young woman who flees to the moors following a disastrous marriage and struggles for independence and lives under an assumed name and earns money as a painter. And that's pretty much all I know. I'm not a huge classics reader as you might be able to tell if you've been around here a while so I'm enjoying, I'm going to enjoy the challenge of picking it up but I just don't know how I'm going to find it so I'll have to uh, reserve judgment and let you know about that but we haven't picked the books for October or November yet so they will be on my TBR. I just can't tell you what they are just yet. So there you go, that is my seasonal autumn TBR. I hope that you enjoyed it. Do let me know what you are planning on reading over the next few months. Let me know if you've read any of the books I mentioned or if you're planning on picking any of the same books up. I always love to know. If you aren't subscribed already, I would really, really love it if you would. Please also don't forget to give me the thumbs up and I will see you all really soon.